What's up guys, Lightning Nova here, and welcome back to 1,000 Lies. So, <clears throat> I'm trying a new setup with my mic, so it's, it's, uh, on the side, yeah, right side, um, uh, sitting here on the right side, so, hopefully the surface of the audio, fine, um, yeah, so I know last week there was only two videos. I had a video that went up earlier on Thursday. Um, that video was actually supposed to come up Saturday of last week. Unfortunately, I forgot to upload that along with the other two. So this week, maybe I'll post four videos. So there will be a video. So you get two videos on one day just to make up for only two videos last week. I had it, then I forgot to upload it. Just set it up to upload after the other one <laughs> uploaded. Uh, the one that went up Friday, I think it was. And then Thursday and Friday. Anyway, let's uh, hop into where we last ended off, which would have been. Give me a second. Oh, okay. yeah. So it would have been May 13th at uh, 150. <laughs> This one. Hmm. Leaving already? I'm letting you some clothes, so you shouldn't have to worry about getting caught. But if you insist, I'm not the actual thing. Yeah, it's late. I want to take a shower, and I may not be tired yet. But I know I end up exhausted from this long day. In any case, I want to thank you for everything. It was a great birthday, and I really had fun. The boy go ratio will be even more in my favor if you leave, so I can't complain. But are you sure that nothing bad happened? On the contrary, Aussie. Then it's because everything went so well. Yeah, <laughs> what happened to all of it? I observed the house from the outside, looking at the lit up windows, trying to catch some sort of movement from the distance. I sighed, decided to forget about it, and walk along the walls of Aussie's house on my way home. But I turn around in the corner, I find someone waiting for me. As usual, this was something only she could be. Surprised me again. Thanks, Claire. Leaving without me, sir? Yep. It's Claire. Knew it. Wow, this looks like I'm pacing you up. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. An uphill walk through the narrow streets of our old town is filled with silence. The road languishes under the broad street light, no noise of that from our own footsteps, creating a uniquely peaceful yet disturbingly calm atmosphere. The norm up until now was for me to listen to Claire talk non-stop about whatever would come to her mind. In that instant, but now she's completely quiet a behavior that she has been appropriating since my birthday party first started. I don't know where this game's going anymore. I thought the whole thing was finding out about the emails, but now that you know she sent them, it's like, where's this game going now? I don't know where this game's going and how long this game is going to last anymore. Depends on how long I create the videos and how fast we get through the content in the length of the videos I make. I already knew that in front of other people, she would act shy and vulnerable, but that has always ended as soon as we're alone together. In its place, she makes fleeting eye contact, then immediately hides under her hat. What's wrong? Is there something wrong with my face? No, no, it's not like that. I'm just very happy. Did something happen while I wasn't looking? I thought you were having a hard time because of your, well, social shyness. Honestly, I'm not going to go and enjoy spending your time with other people. <clears throat> your friends are great, and they're fun, but I have to admit that I was starting to feel a bit overwhelmed. Even Dins? I thought you already knew him from before. He's an exception. We were friends a long time ago, and we'd always meet in a certain place, but one day, Something happened, and we never met again. Our friendship grew distant over time, and although we get along, 
There's a wall between us that neither of us has any intention of tearing down. You make it sound as if something terrible happened. I wonder if that's actually it. Claire makes it clear that, that with her nostalgic tone and my long head that she prefer not to keep talking about this topic. In its place, I change the topic to what I hope will bring back will bring back out the Claire I know. That doesn't explain why you were so happy about today, although what actually happened? You have been so. I'm happy that I was able to attend your birthday party and for being able to walk by your side. Any vestige of sadness evaporates from her face as she clings to one of my arms with a tight grip. Claire's feelings are so strange to me, even though I have all the knowledge of them I need, so her displays of affection still take me by surprise every time. I'm myself when I'm with you. I'm not the kind of person who would hug anyone for no reason, much less be this comfortable around another person. But if it's you, then I don't mind. There's nothing holding me back. That just made me think of Shawn Mendes' There's Nothing Holding Me Back song. I stop walking in the, on the middle of the hill and stand still. Claire then lets go of my arm and looks at me with uncertainty. I've already noticed what's happening. I've been trying to know her extremely abnormal behavior, but it's only managed to make me even more suspicious since, after all, Claire's still kind of a stranger to me. If you had nothing to hide, then there was no reason for you to make it so hard for us to meet. Every time I think I've gotten, gotten to know you better, you manage to do something that I can't understand. Why does Lucy's neighbor have the package I was waiting for, for example? Was that also part of your doing? That was... was... an accident. An accident? What the hell are you talking about? Look, Claire, I understand that you want to stay with me, know me, and all of that. I feel honored by that, but I need the full truth. Alright, I don't want to come to this ahead of time, but I guess say it today with certainty. She bows her head, closes her eyes, and inhales deeply. I turn around and wait for her. She was going down my spine for every second that I went, and then these lips. And she was, she was. <clears throat> she opens her eyes, looks at me tenderly, and. A car drives past all sides of the side with full speed. It seems for us to take cover because of the noise. What a psycho. You almost drove over the sidewalk. Are you okay? Claire nods in response. Let's go to the other side. It's a bit wider. Wider, so it'll be safer. Claire doesn't really look convinced, but she accepts it. Follow me while I cross the road. Halfway there, she takes my hand and forces me to stop walking. I love you, so... Well, if this is a little more in the video, I would stop there, but can't. I try to turn around, but she grabs my shirt as tightly as she can and buries her face in my back. Succumbing to embarrassment, she keeps telling me that she loves me, clearing any doubts I had as she continues yelling it into my back. <coughs> I've loved you since the first moment I saw you. At first, I wasn't sure about it, or well, I didn't want to meet. But I have no more doubts to say. I can say it fearlessly, fearlessly. I want to stay with you forever, so You make me feel special, and for that reason, I can't let you leave, no matter what the cost is. She pulls on my shirt, shaking as if she feels that I'll disappear any second. Claire, no. Don't say anything. Her small arms intertwine beneath my chest. Squeezing on me with all of her strength. She's making it hard for me to breathe, but that doesn't matter. I've told you a million times, right? After all, to me, the most important thing is for you to be truthful. But there are some truths that hurt more than others. I look at her and carefully hold her tiny hand. Man just lodged them off, my, off of me little by little until I can turn around. Claire's hiding under her hat again, so to make eye contact, I kneel down and place her hands with mine. What can I do for you, Claire? What did I do to make you fall in love with me? 
I don't know what I could have done for this to happen. Oh, you're falling my throat. There are things in this world that we know without facts or reason. We can only hope that they continue being real for the rest of our lives. But I'm certain that in this case, not even time can tear my fear away from me. I stand up, a guilty fear feeling sending you well away from my throat. Claire hugs me once more, this time from the front, rest her head against my chest and listen to my quickened heartbeat. Neither of us say anything for at least two minutes. I remain deaf, even to the chatter of a couple of pedestrians that pass us. It's the shine and softness of her hair interlaced between my fingers that grabs my attention like a treasure that I can't leave behind. The warmth of her clear skin, even just touching it through her clothes, makes my sense of touch react, struggling to understand the texture of her fragile figure. Seconds later, I feel her struggling to push away. I react surprisingly and let her go, even though I don't really want to break the contact. Let's make a deal, so... Claire takes a deep breath, gathering the courage she needs to speak. Her voice is gentle and sweet, but somehow also solemn. I told you how I feel, but I want to know how you feel about me, and I'd like to know your answer before we part ways on graduation day. On that day, I want to hear your answer. I want to know the truth. I won't be satisfied if you aren't sure with it. I've told you many times that I don't like half-baked answers. Whatever it is, I want it to be real. I simply nod, confused. The presence she transmits, inconceivable for her height, doesn't allow me to give any other response. I'm glad that you understand. Claire sighs in relief, lifting her weight off my shoulders. She reaches towards my hand, holding it affectionately and blushing. Meanwhile, we decide to start heading home. I don't remember when we left the narrow streets of our town, nor the time it took us to return to our houses. Considering that time itself had disappeared for the rest of the night as we walked side by side, pointing hands. I never did get the answers that I was searching for, and Claire still a stranger to me in a lot of ways, but neither of those is used for me to ignore the unconventional love story that's developing right before my eyes any longer. The inevitable conclusion even as it has a preset date. This time, I'll have to write an ending. I'm kind of hoping that graduation day is the end of the 1000 lives. That would just be perfect ending. Chapter 4! How many chapters does this game have? I have no idea. We are chapter 4. Why did you leave the other day, Edwin? We were at the best part. It might have been late, but it was your party. You could have at least said goodbye or something instead of making Aussie do it for you. Why did you do it? Okay, let's make one thing clear. <clears throat> what would you say if the girl had had horns like a bull? Getting poked could definitely be an issue for sure, but it worth it for a girl who's always horny. What in the name of God are you guys talking about? Stop ignoring me! We're still going on with our ideal goal challenge we started the other day. Today's the Monster Girls edition. Wanna join in? No, I'm trying to talk about something important here, and you guys are ignoring me and discussing nonsense. It's not nonsense, Ziva. Monster Girls need love too, and I'm not about to be the one to deny it to them. Just what I needed. You're siding with him, Aussie? Aren't you saying that he just up and left after using your house for his party? Listen here, Alamia, you know, the ones that are half or half snake, what do you say about them? It's the same thing as with mermaids, so I don't even really care which half we're talking about. Alamia would be the same, but without the water issue. Hello? He thanked me, Zima, what else do I need? You can at least pretend that you care about what I say. Any apology, an explanation, an excuse, give me something. After all, the effort we put in, you left without a word and act as if it's normal. You have a ghost that don't even exist. A harpy. But keep in mind that just like four boys, you should have a really short memory. I was talking to you, Edwin. Look at my face when I'm speaking to you. Angel and Zima hits my desk and gets over my face so closely that she's all I can see. Time complaints, I breathe in deeply and wait for her to go away. 
Sorry, I wasn't intending to sound angry. I'll tell you the truth, that's what you want. I left. The end. It's as simple as that. It wasn't anyone else's fault. It was late and I felt like going home. Now, going back to the Hoppies, it was quite an important question. And my answer is, of course. She could take me and fly around, and with a short memory, everything would feel as if it were the first time. That's an advantage in a certain way. I seriously don't understand you guys. Don't think for a second that I'm going to give up just like that. On the contrary, you've given me another reason to obey you as my patient. When we go back to the patient thing, I thought we were finally done with that. You read my notebook the other day, I don't know why you keep going. Next, Aussie. What about a centaur? What do you say? She's more horse than a woman. Come on, Capano. The writing joke is too easy, even for me. You only had a couple of chapters of the story about a wolf in there. It was a disappointment. So, you finally admit that you read it even though you denied it earlier? Yeah, well, I read a bit. So what? It was an awful story and I hated it. Hey Ziva, I haven't read it, but could you try to make your critique a little more constructive? If he was embarrassed to show us, it was for a reason. Don't worry, Aussie. It's fine. I understand that not everyone would like that kind of story. In my defense, though, it isn't even finished yet. But what would you say about a slime? I go with most of my body composed of a jelly like substance. I don't know if you heard of them before. So she's delicious in every sense of the word? So you have to make this harder. <coughs> in fact, jelly is one of my favorite desserts, especially when having a bad day. I know a pretty good place to buy jelly desserts in town, too. What do you say, Zima? Would you like to come with me, or let you vent your source to me since you seem to be a bit angry about this? I'm sorry, Aussie, but today is impossible. Thanks for the offer. Come on, Ziva, you're better than that. First you complain about how plain my goodbyes are, and then you kind of ask me that you can come up with a good enough excuse? I can't, okay? I'm only meeting someone. You don't care anyway, you don't care about anything at all, right? Like, you guys can keep it up with your goal thing, I'm gonna get ready for the next class. Zima's acting pretty weirdly, isn't she? It's quite the rush. Now I don't think I've seen her like this before. She's usually really cheerful and never angry with you. Aussie's right. Zeev's acting differently today, and watching how she leaves, I can't ever wonder the same thing as my classmate. Who is she going to meet up with? For some reason, it's weird for me to think about her as someone who goes out with others, even though I know how popular she is with everyone. People are in love with her wherever she goes. She's probably asked out almost every day. Then why have I never thought about her in that way before? I have an idea that I can clear up our doubts. A fond girl. She has got lead, she has gold lead and plays a few. I'm sure you don't want to accept that. One question. Does she have a goatee? What? No, well, I don't really know. Does it matter? It's important if she has a goatee, then yes. She does, if she doesn't? Still yes. Why'd you ask anyway? I think I found out a little faster. Anyway... We're gonna end it there. So if you guys enjoyed me, me, this video, be sure to click that like button. It lets me know you're enjoying the content or help support the channel. And if you haven't done so already, click the subscribe button. Join the plan of today. And then I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.